So the other day I watched Mass Rider uh, episode five, and then I just re kind of rewatched it uh, like double speed just to refresh my memory about it. And it's oddly like a cozy show. Um, the whole sitcom vibe is really strong there. Uh, it's odd, like I don't understand why they would do that, but they're doing it kind of effectively, and I have some appreciation for what they're doing. Again, I think it's kind of weird, and I don't really get it. Uh, Patsy coming over, just like walking through the door randomly. You know, of course, their door's not locked. Like, that's such a sitcom move. Um, I think they even did that in WandaVision, right? Um, what's her name? The other lady, you know, you know what I'm talking about? No spoilers. Uh, she ended up just Agatha. Agatha just came, uh, or Agnes, I think was her name. Oops. <laughs> she just came along and would like pop into their house. Uh, I, what, the Maximal? I, I, this Vision doesn't have a last name. Anyway, he would just, she would just like pop into their house and Patsy's kind of doing the same thing. And uh, it's funny because like they've got this whole kind of she's searching for the mass writer, this giant bug that she saw. And... I don't know what it, to what purpose, and I know I keep bringing that up, and I've, I've kind of compared it to the Vulcan Skull thing, them trying to figure out who the Power Rangers really are, you know, to become famous or whatever it was. I can't remember their motivation for it, but um, she just wants to know who, you know, this bug is, and she asks Dex, hey, have you seen any weird bugs lately? Like, first of all, it's ridiculous that she thinks that a man in a bug suit is literally a bug, and second of all, that she would ask him in that way, it just seems so odd. And then, like, at the end of the episode, like, her talking about, you know, wanting to meet this hunky, uh, you know, Furbus who probably has chest on his hair, uh, hair on his chest, and the whole family laughing about it, and Furbus kind of, like, becoming interested in Patsy, um, and, like, them closing with, like, oh, no, we gotta talk to you about this, Furbus, like, this is not okay, uh, like, it all felt really warm and affectionate and, like I said, cozy, and, like, kind of, I don't know, there's something about sitcoms that's kind of magical where, like, there's... Even if there's an ongoing story to it, and they do callbacks and stuff that are legitimate, there's still like a reset, like a mini reset, and like everything's just papered over and okay. And it's really interesting to me that they're doing that here, and it feels, I don't know, effectively, it, it feels like it's like new nostalgia almost, like it's, or, or like instant nostalgia. And uh, I don't know, I kind of like the effect of that, and like I said, it kind of has like a warming effect, and um, there's something really nice about like, oh, these people, the Stewarts, barely know Dex and Furbis. They just found, the parents, just found out about Furbis last episode, and they're already welcoming him him into the family 100%, inviting him to go on a, you know, bug hunting trip in the country. Uh, like, even though you might want to just keep that furball inside your house so that you don't get in trouble or, like, have, you know, weird exploits from people trying to hunt him down, which, like, when's that episode going to happen? Oh, no, a neighbor saw Furbis. Now they're trying to capture him, right? Anyway, and then he'll end up at someone's house and they'll say, look at this weird dog we found. Some little kids will find him. Mommy, we found a dog. Anyway, I don't know why, but that, that does feel like it very well could happen. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but, uh, like, it's really cool how, like I said, they've accepted Furbis and, of course, they've accepted Dex. It's a little easier because he's a human and he saved their lives and, like, the town, right? Um, so you'd think you'd have some appreciation for that guy. But also, like, when he was uh, calling for... Uh, Hal and and Albie to look for them to save them uh, when they were in that cave uh, you know he's calling Hal dad and um, it felt really nice like oh man this kid he's been accepted into this family and not only have they accepted him as this you know stranger this alien coming into their world literally uh, and coming and helping them and saving them but he also like has an affection for them and you know Albie and Molly I think that's her name are his brother and sister and Hal and whatever the mom's name is are like his parents now and that's like it's weird it's weird but I like it again it's like this it seems as if they've never been uh, like they've always grown up together even though I know and you know and they know that he just came in from another world like a month ago or a couple months ago or something and it's just uh, I don't know it's very strange it's, it's an odd feeling to have but like I said I like it and I enjoy the dynamic of it and uh, it's just kind of sweet and innocent and like as much as it's uh, I think gosh was there something silly that happened with the maggots this episode I felt like I didn't I neglected oh I think one of the maggots got hit by like a tree branch as Hal and Albie and Furbus were running away and that's really stupid that's that's super that's super super dumb like if they you know if let's say the maggots are aliens too right just like Dex so they're kind of fish out of water if they were able to be tricked cleverly by like like they didn't know what a door was right because maybe there's no doors in Eden noise so like you go behind a closed door they don't know how to open that, that 
that thing, their hands don't work the right way for them to be able to open it, you know? So, uh, you know, that could be clever, but like hiding out in the country, I don't know. Like, I don't know. There's got to be some other way to make them not uh, as much of a threat as they should be or could be to the mass Rider's friends and family um, without having them be as you know childish and ridiculous as they are here. Um, so there's that. I thought it was interesting that Furbus gets to save the day. I feel like he he didn't actually get to save the day. Like maybe he's kind of saved the situation of the day one other time. Like he ran off to the school, right? He took that wagon and he rode that to the school and helped out in the first episode, I think. Uh, but since then, you know, he's you know uh, fast puttied or like fast set cemented those burglars in the house. But um, you know they were just coming to kidnap him, right? Uh, I think is the idea to lure uh, Dex out. And then finally, that plan of luring Dex with somebody he cares about, uh, you know, is brought to fruition in this with Hal and, and Albie. Um, but like, yeah, I thought it was cool that he got to drive that car or he got to drive their van. Uh, the fact that he used the club, <laughs> you're probably, you might be too young to remember, that, but there's this thing people used to put on their cars, on their steering wheel, that nobody could steal your car. My grandpa, <laughs> uh, may his memory be for a blessing. My grandpa Hector would, um, he had a club. He used it for years and years and years. And I think even he died way too soon. Uh, I think even his car still had it in there. <laughs> and like, I don't know if my mom had the key or what uh, to it. I'm sure they did because I know they were driving the car. They, they sold their something afterwards. But just, I always think of the club when I see the, uh, I, remember, I think of the commercial and I think of my grandpa when I see the club. And it was just a real, a real delight for me. That's personal nostalgia seeing that club. But it was cool that Furbish used the club to, he's too short to reach the pedals, right? So he used that to reach the pedals. And I thought that was cool. Um, and then I was thinking, well, I wonder if the club hadn't been invented or, you know, what would Hal have had like a two by four in there or a baseball bat or, you know, there's some other family, um, family adjacent item that they could have had for him to use in there. And I just thought it was kind of fun and clever and like a, like a cultural touchstone in a weird way that he ended up using the club because that was the thing uh, at the time the show was created. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's good and there's bad. I talked about the dumb, you know, maggots. Uh, oh, also one thing I thought was, it was, I don't know if it's as much dumb as it is that it just is like, it, it's, it may be logically consistent in the universe and the world of Mass Rider, but it kind of took me out of it and it didn't make sense, which is that fact, the floating robot thing that says, announcing, uh, you know, whatever, Count Dragon, blah, 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 uh, fact told Dragon at the beginning, oh, this plan has a such and such percent chance of succeeding. And then other things developed, and then the and then fact updated him and said, now there's a this chance of succeeding. And uh, Dragon at the end says like, you betrayed me, and how could you? And you lied to me. And the the android robot, whatever it is, said, no, I I only said what the chances of victory were, and they were accurate. I did not say uh, who I was ascribing that chance to. So for some reason, fact was calculating the chances that Dex slash Mass Rider would overcome Dragon in this situation, even though I'm sure Dragon is the one that powers or gives the fuel source that this robot android thing needs to live. And like, it should be programmed for, <laughs> they're programmed for courage. It should be programmed for loyalty to him. Uh, that was a really bad uh, Tento, or Tento. That was a really bad Izzy from the uh, Digimon Adventure dub. Um, they must be programmed for courage. Yeah. That's even worse. Anyway, um, but uh, listening to the soundtrack of the show, I can't help but think about Digimon. So sorry, you're gonna get a bunch of uh, Digimon adventure probably uh, references uh, dropped in here every now and then. So, anyway, the uh, I know that's about it. Like I, I kind of wanted to touch, you know, what was good, what did I like, what was bad, and uh, what was weird or interesting. Uh, I guess that that thing about fact is an interesting little factoid. I think it's really cool that it's it's kind of dorky, but it's you know whatever. I'm talking about Mass Rider. Simon's Mass Rider. I think it's really cool that Dex activates or whatever Magno and uh, combat chopper by saying rev up and uh, that sounds really really cool it's almost too cool for the show and i feel like that should have been like his tagline as masked writer or like uh you know the tagline of the show or whatever um but anyway i really like that i think it's really cool and i might have to use that somewhere somehow someday anyway that's it for my uh like instant more or less reaction to uh masked writer episode five i'm still liking the show and uh i don't know it's a weird weird wild ride if you enjoy this, please check out mjmunoz.com for more of my analysis. I have more serious stuff, but also this fun kind of stuff, too. Uh, I talk about tokusatsu and comics and all the different stuff that I like, and hopefully you like, too.